44 games up, 44 games down, and we are finally ready for the Cape Cod League playoffs. It's going to be the two-seed Hyannis Harbor Hawks taking on the three-seed Falmouth Commodores. And we could not preview this all by ourselves on Harbor Hawk Baseball Network, so we called in a little bit of help. Zach Serdenik, the Falmouth Commodores broadcaster, is joining us today to preview this series. Zach, how's it going today? It's going great, man. Getting ready to go. It should be a really fun series. I'm really excited. So just looking into this series and, and how it's looked in the past this year, Hyannis ended up taking the season series four games to two. The first four games went the Harbor Hawks ways. They had a four to nothing series lead going into the final two matchups. And then Falmouth was able to pull off a couple of one run victories. I think that the last three meetings are probably going to be more indicative of this series than the first three. And one of those last three games was a big win for Hyannis. But I think that the teams are so different than they were at the beginning of the year, particularly Falmouth. A lot of different guys coming in after that June 26th meeting with the Harbor Hawks when Falmouth dropped to 3-10 and 2. Since then, 21-8. and eight. The Commodores have really picked it up, similar to what the Harbor Hawks have done as well. But I think those last three meetings, especially the really close games, are something you got to keep an eye on that should continue into this weekend series. Yeah, and, and we'll take a look at those specific players a little bit more later in the show. But right now, let's take a look at how the Harbor Hawks got to this point. They started the season and were sitting at 13 and 12 on July 12th, but really hit their stride in mid July, winning 11 of 13 games. And a lot of this was thanks to more contact hitting. They were more power reliant and three true outcome reliant earlier in the season with guys like Cam Smith, Zach Earhart more power guys that ultimately didn't play as much bat to ball skills, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but eventually they ended up balancing out their lineup very nicely with additions like John, John Gazdar and Zach York, both of which are hitting above 300 right now. York of course had 20 games in 19 RBIs to finish out the season in his time with Hyannis. Certainly a formidable foe, a guy that, Falmouth certainly is going to have trouble with and has had trouble with in the past. So who are some of the guys that you're looking at and, and what, how is this season more similar to Hyannis, the trajectory of this season for Falmouth? You mentioned it earlier in that maybe starting off poorly and then really getting some guys to come in and contribute. I mean, you look at it and right away, you notice Travis Bazana jumps off the page and those type of guys entering the fold. But I want to talk about something that might be a little more underrated that Falmouth really picked up on. They were making a ton of errors at the beginning of the year. They couldn't field the baseball and they were walking a lot of guys and those things really turned down as the team got hot. They started playing better defense. They stopped walking guys. They started striking out more guys on the pitching side. And that really helped this team as the offense got going to kind of move along with it and win some more games. And I think that's something that, the Commodores, in a couple of their losses recently, have struggled a little bit with that. Even in the win against Iannis a few days ago, there were a lot of Falmouth errors in that game. It's something to keep an eye on going into the playoffs because when they're playing good defense, that's when they're at their best. There's a shocking amount of similarities between these two teams. I never really personally put those two together. Hyannis, of course, really struggled with defense as well. And then new defense up the middle. They got some guys come in, play some really solid defense. And it sounds like it was kind of the same with Falmouth this year. And they really cleaned up those defensive mistakes. So really, these two teams mirrored each other throughout the year. Maybe Falmouth starting out a little bit more poorly, maybe a little bit of a slower start than Hyannis. They kind of hovered around 500 while Falmouth sort of was very much below 500 and made a huge push towards the playoffs. Yeah, it's part of the reason that makes this series so exciting and why I think those last couple one-run games, and honestly, four of the five meetings, or four of the six meetings between these two teams were one-run games this year. And I think that's what you're going to see because these teams are so closely tied together and so similar. You've got a lot of really good bats in the lineups for both sides. You've got good pitching on both sides. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and we mentioned some of the key players 
that have contributed to the turnarounds. But let's take a look at the key players outside of those. And one of them for Hyannis was really Hayden Frank. He has been a starter. Six of his 10 appearances this year have been starts. He relies heavily on his fastball. His curveball is also a really good secondary pitch. He'll also mix in a slider and a changeup. A guy that's come in and been just great for the Harbor Hawks this year and will in all likelihood start one of the three games uh, for the Harbor Hawks. And in addition to that, other starters that we could see, Zach Folker, in addition to Darren Horn. There's talks of him starting game one, so we'll see. In, in On the Falmouth side, in terms of starting pitching, who do you expect to get a couple of the starts? So if we're going just based off of where guys would be in the rotation, it sets up really well for Falmouth. You got your best two starters going one and two if they do go that way. Brayden Davis and Mikey Barnett. I've both been outstanding this year. Braden Davis, really good control lefty out of Sam Houston State the past couple of years headed to Oklahoma. He's been phenomenal. And then Michael Barnett had a really good year at UCLA as a freshman, and he brings really strong stuff to the Cape as well. That's where I think the strength of this Falmouth team is going to be in these playoffs because everybody knows the bats are there. Everything, the back end of the bullpen's lights out with Garrett Coe and Joey Ryan and all of those guys. But the starting pitching, when you can throw Braden Davis out there, Michael Barnett out there, maybe Jacob Smith could go at some point in this series, or if not, into the next one if Falmouth advances. Ryan McCarroll could go. You could see him. You could see Evan O'Toole, who's got a lot of good stuff as well out of Oklahoma State. They're so deep in the starting pitching category, plus their bullpen. I think the pitching is going to be really strong this weekend. And then switching pace over to the offense, we know Falmouth has an amazing offense. They have the batting title winner. Maybe go into a little bit what Bazana has brought to this team, but also those complementary pieces that have really helped them make this push into the third seed. So to start with Bazana, Bazana is a leader in every aspect of the word. He's out there every day doing what he needs to do. And when you talk to anybody else on the team, they'll tell you Travis does everything right. And a lot of these guys are going to Travis and he's working with them on little things in their swing. I talked to Cape League All-Star Gavin Keelan, who's no longer with the Commodores, but when he really started to turn the season around, I asked him what had changed. He said he was working with Travis a little bit on his swing and something clicked. He is able to guide these guys because he knows so much about what he's doing and the analytics and the insider things of the swing, the little minutia of what people are doing that he's able to really guide everybody. And you can see that in the way that he performs on the field as well. He's riding a 12-game hit streak into the playoffs. Seven of those are multi-hit games. He had one streak in that stretch where he had seven multi-hit games in a row, with five of them being three-hit games or higher. He is really, really good. But if you talk about the complementary pieces, I think that's where Falmouth's going to really shine, is you've got guys like Bazana's teammate at Oregon State and Gavin Turley, who has turned it on over the last 10 games or so. A ton of extra base hits, three home runs, up near 20 RBIs now. He's got a ton of pop in that bat, and his hands are so quick he can turn on pitches inside that you don't see from a lot of guys. And then lastly, I want to touch on Walker Yannick. Walker Yannick has really gotten it done at the plate. He's hit five home runs. He's had a good season at the plate, but behind the dish, he is – arguably the best defensive catcher on the Cape all year. He's top in the league in framing runs saved, according to the Cape League analytics stuff, as well as he's best in throwing out runners. People don't run on Walker Yannick because he's so smooth, and that's something that's going to really have an advantage for them. If you're looking for complementary pieces, X-Factors per se, keep an eye on Turley and Yannick. Yeah, in four Hyannis, you have Zach Earhart, the one of the best bunters mm -hmm. we've seen come through Hyannis, and maybe the Cape in recent memory, a guy that just by the string of the hair missed three hitting 300 on the year in his final at bat just two nights ago by the time this video comes out. But in addition to that, we mentioned Zach York, great bat to ball guy. Again, he came in and immediately was having a 10 plus game hit streak. Zach York, in addition to John John Gazdar, who's been seeing the ball really, really well recently, thinking of, you know, the corner infielders. Cam Smith, can't say enough good things about him. It amazes me that we haven't brought up Cam Smith to this point. And Smith is a guy that has really put himself into the MVP conversation this year, playing in all 44 games. Only two of those were pinch hit opportunities. So truly an Ironman. And 
if you look at this Falmouth pitching staff against the Hyannis offense, what's going to be the key to trying attacking them and, and slowing them down? Because throughout this year, Hyannis has had a good amount of success. Well, I think the first thing's got to be don't let Cam Smith kill you. Cam Smith has been ridiculously good against Falmouth. Through his first five meetings, he had a hit in every one. He didn't start the last one. That was one of those pinch hit opportunities, and he struck out. But he has been outstanding. He's homered in each of his last three starts against Falmouth. He's got an extra base hit in all five starts against Falmouth. That's the one guy that, no matter through the lineup changes, Falmouth has really struggled to get out. And if they can get him out, and if they can continue to work through, limit the walks, limit the mistakes defensively, I think that's where they're going to shine. And I think that the two guys I mentioned in terms of starters, if they have those with Braden Davis and Michael Barnett, if that does end up being who it is for games one and two, those are the guys you like to do those things. Yeah. If you had to name one X factor in this series for Falmouth, who would it be? Ooh, I'm going to go Gavin Turley. I think Gavin Turley is the X factor anytime that Falmouth steps out on the field because he's got so much talent out there in the outfield. He's one of the top prospects in the 2025 draft. He was the highest rated prospect ever to Oregon State in the history of that storied program. When he is going, he's really, really good. And that just adds another layer to this Falmouth team. Yeah. And for me, honestly, it's just going to be Hyannis's pitching staff as a whole mm-hmm. that is the X factor in this one. Can they shut down the Falmouth bats that we know are just great? And they have shown that, especially in the month of July and in the second half of the season. So... One last question for you, Zach. If you had to make a prediction on the series, if you're willing to make a prediction, what would it be? This is tough because I really like the way Falm is playing and I like the pitching staff. I worry slightly about the non-home field advantage because Hyannis plays so well at McKeon Park and Falm has struggled at McKeon Park. But I think in that same respect, it's really tough to beat a good team at a place like that four times in a row. And so I do think that – I think this series is going to be close and no outcome would surprise me. Neither team winning in two or three games would surprise me at all. If I had to pick, I do think that Falmouth has the bats and with that pitching staff, I think the pitching is going to be the difference with Davis and Barnett and whoever else is going in there as well if that is who they go with. I'm, I'm going to take Falmouth to take this one, but it's going to be really close. I don't know exactly how many games it's going to be, but I can tell you this. I don't think they're going to be blowouts. I think everything's going to be close. Yeah. And for me, honestly, it's kind of the same thought process. Any outcome is on the table. You can, in baseball, you can have two straight Mm one-run games. Game one can be a one-run game that's just a flip of the coin. Who has the bats last? Who can be able to just get that one runner across, get that one break? And that a game like that followed up by another game just like it isn't Mm -hmm. unheard of. So one of these teams winning in two games would not be a surprise to me. Now, with that said, I think the home field advantage for Hyannis is huge. We've seen them play against Falmouth very well this year. The one-run games that they've been able to squeak through against Falmouth and then later on lose or have been just so adding to this element of randomness that we're going to see in this series. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That said, I do have Hyannis winning on Sunday at McKeon Park to try and move on to the Western Division Finals. And it's just going to be an amazing series. These are the two of some of the hottest teams, if not the hottest teams in the league matched up. It's going to be a lot of fun. And whoever faces these two teams into the next round one whoever ends up moving on it's going to be a great series it's going to be a great playoffs i'm very excited